Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. On Saturday, the second round of the referendum to approve or disapprove of the new Egyptian constitution will take place. Now joining us from Cairo to discuss all of this is Amr Adli. He's a senior researcher at the Egyptian Initiative for Personal Rights, heading up the Social and Economic Rights Unit. He was previously a diplomat with the Egyptian Foreign Ministry, and he also writes for Egypt Independent. Thanks very much for joining us, Amr. Thank you. Let me quickly say, uh, make, and then you can tell me if I have it right, the, the reason there's a second round is because the judges have to approve this, uh, oversee the process. There's not enough judges to actually do it all in one go, so there's been a second round. And one of the reasons there's not enough judges is that something like half the judges refuse to even participate. So do I have that much right? Yeah. Okay, so then let's get on to the, the constitution issues itself. So, so uh, the majority of people in Cairo, but probably not the majority of the people of Egypt, are opposed to this new constitution. It's likely to pass based on polling. But for those who are opposed to it, why are they? Uh, it mainly has to do with the process. Many political uh, forces and social groups uh, are quite alarmed by the uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, dominance of the of the process of constitution writing and the very fact that they uh, like dominated the constituent assembly and they sidelined the liberal and uh, leftist opposition this is in the in the background so uh, what we are having here is not just uh, uh, like a vote on the constitution it's rather uh, a vote on the very uh, legitimacy of the uh, brotherhood and of the uh, brotherhood backed president so the the context and the process itself through which the constitution draft was uh, written and then put for referendum uh, is extremely important. We have to bear in mind that less than a month ago, the president issued um, a, a, like what he called the constitutional declaration that was uh, quite controversial and he mainly gave himself sweeping powers in a way that was very alarming to uh, the opposition as well as well as to many uh, political and social groups in, uh, in, in Egypt. And this unleashed an unprecedented wave of uh, protest. I'm saying unprecedented because we haven't seen something like that since Mubarak's ouster. Uh, almost two years ago. Uh, so within this very uh, controversy and, and uh, a deeply divided uh, political scene, uh, the president like chose uh, to run forward uh, from the crisis by actually calling for a referendum on the uh, constitution that was uh, finished in the very absence of the opposition that left the constituent assembly. Um, and uh, uh, that, 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 that is one of the reasons why the opposition chose to uh, urge the people to vote against the constitution. Now, there seems to be sort of three big, broad camps here. I'm sure it's far more nuanced than what I'm about to say. But you know, the Muslim Brotherhood and its supporters in, in, who are in favor of, of the president and in favor of this constitution, there seems to be serious differences with, with those members of the elite that previously supported Mubarak, uh, who, who are more secular and don't want to live under a Muslim Brotherhood kind of theocracy. And then you have the camp of the revolutionaries who want a really democratic Egypt, which also includes democratizing the economy. And they have big, they have big differences with both of those camps, the ex-Mubarak camp and the Muslim Brotherhood camp. Uh, do I have this roughly correct? Yeah, co correct. You, 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 have it, you have it right. Uh, of course, things are, are quite complex because the, like the, the Brotherhood uh, is allied to uh, many elements of the old regime. Uh, uh, like, for example, uh, the Ministry of Interior has not been restructured. The Ministry of Interior, which is uh, or which has been accused of many atrocities under Mubarak, and as a matter of fact, even uh, afterwards, uh, has not been structured. No cleansing took place. Of course, like if you uh, refer to the other security apparatus, the military, all of these are quite allied with the with the Brotherhood and the constitutional draft. For example, uh, uh, gives the the, the military. Uh, uh, full independence from the rest of the state as a matter of fact you have like an autonomous military economy which is quite big and pervasive uh, it's estimated uh, to be like somewhere between 20 to 30 percent the egyptian economy and uh, according to the constitution that is being passed now uh, uh, this is going to be uh, left totally out of uh, of sight uh, of the coming or of the, of the parliament in general um, uh, as well as like other institutional arrangements, according to which the military would actually intervene uh, heavily in the in the formation of the of uh, uh, of Egypt's foreign policy. So, as as a matter of fact, the clauses that have to do with the military, as well as other security apparatus, uh, uh, are uh, uh, actually uh, 
make Egypt uh, very close to uh, uh, to the Pakistani case. Mm. Uh, so the, the Brotherhood is allied to uh, many uh, circles of the old interests uh, that have to do a lot with the Mubarak's order. Uh, and the other camp, the opposition, the liberal opposition itself, has allies within the, uh, the, the old uh, system. Uh, like the judiciary, for example, is quite conservative and uh, it has its own interests that date back to the old regime. Uh, and of course, like there are other uh, members uh, that uh, are not, by the way, uh, uh, necessarily secular. Like ideology here doesn't play a significant role. It, it mainly has to do with the networks of, uh, of privilege because like the, the, the Brotherhood has its own uh, uh, patronage networks and like clientelistic networks. Um, and these people don't fit into them. So th this is one of the of the reasons. It's it's not purely ideological here. Right. And for the workers uh, and students, but um, particularly the workers who who were so much really the backbone of of the revolution. If I understand it correctly, this constitution has some measures in it that that really limit the abilities of unions and workers and such. Is that right? This is true. So uh, when it comes to social and economic rights, they were almost uh, copied and pasted from the uh, the 1971 constitution. Uh, uh, the one on, uh, like against which the revolution took place. And uh, you, you have no clear commitments. Uh, there is no mention of Egypt's commitments according to international covenants and agreements. Um, and uh, of course, you have all of the limitations on the freedom of association, union formation, etc. And of course, uh, if, if you put again the process through which these clauses were written uh, in the broader political context, uh, you will find that the Brotherhood uh, has been has shown itself to be a very conservative uh, uh, movement, um, and that uh, uh, the laws and decrees that they passed uh, under the president and even under the parliament are very uh, inimic to the uh, uh, like to the independent labor movement and to labor rights in general. Now that doesn't seem to be a matter of concern to the American government, which is giving a what is something like a billion dollars of. Re, uh, debt forgiveness, half a billion in cash, I think, and then the IMF is giving something over a four billion dollars loan. Uh, they, none of them seem too concerned about what's happening here. Definitely, the U.S. is not that concerned about, uh, like, neither, like, the U.S. government. I mean, neither, like, uh, the democratic transition nor uh, social and economic justice in Egypt, and uh, it makes sense. Uh, the point is that the Brotherhood is currently uh, supported by the by the U.S. And there's no way uh, of understanding how Morsi could move with the constitutional declaration and granting himself like uh, 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 sweeping uh, uh, powers uh, w without the, the U.S. backing. And this itself has to do with how the Brotherhood managed the conflict that took place in Gaza uh, over a month ago. Uh, uh, because they simply proved that they can uh, do whatever Mubarak was doing uh, uh, only with more popularity and more legitimacy. But this was exactly uh, what they did. And this is uh, why, actually, they started to gain uh, support from the uh, administration as well as from the uh, like uh, from the Congress, because they, they proved to be uh, capable of playing Mubarak's uh, uh, role, like supporting the broader arrangements that are related to the American interests uh, in the region. Right. Uh, but then the, the the problem comes here uh, that the the Americans uh, uh, were mainly betting on the Brotherhood to stabilize Egypt. And uh, this is not uh, like it, it, like the country is not stabilizing. Simply, uh, uh, we have had, uh, as I said, unprecedented wave of protest against the Brotherhood uh, in the last uh, uh, couple of weeks. Uh, the urban centers that actually witnessed the January Revolution of 2011 against Mubarak uh, are now uh, protesting against the Brotherhood and have voted massively against the Brotherhood. Uh, and uh, uh, even if the constitution passes with the 50 something percent. Um, uh, you, you, like uh, this is not uh, a law that can be passed or a president that can be elected. Uh, the constitution here should uh, actually establish a legitimate political order that should be accepted by everybody. So uh, now imagine that this is going to be accepted by uh, almost half of the Egyptians, uh, while the other half uh, are opposed to it and they don't believe that it is legitimate or that it actually uh, rises to their expectations. So I, I don't believe that this is any recipe for, uh, for stability. And in this sense, uh, I, I'm not sure whether the Americans can uh, keep counting on the Brotherhood to reproduce Mubarak's uh, regime, because this is exactly what's happening. All right. Thanks very much for joining us, Anna. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.